Hey, what's up everyone? So in this video, we're going to be adding in the ability to pass in user avatars or profile pictures inside of our voice calling app that's using Agora, RTC and RTM together. So if you're not part of this mini series, we're building out this voice application. This is one of the last videos in that series and we're just going to add in some more functionality. We've already passed through user names. So a lot of these concepts have been explained. Uh, what I'm going to do is just add in images to that and we're just going to go ahead and throw in some images into a folder and we're gonna pass in like the file path or URL to the image. So the concept should be easy to understand, especially if you already passed or watched the Agora RTM RTC integration video and the username video. So if you understand that one, this part will be easy. We're just gonna go ahead and add in some options to select these avatars here in the form and then uh, we'll pass that data through. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, source code is linked up in the video description. We are on number seven right now. So go ahead and select this file here and we have a written guide and we're gonna follow this one. So all we're gonna do here is go ahead and add in some images to our form. At the start of this series, I actually included these images inside of this folder here so we have icons and avatars here if you want to use these images for a reference uh, go ahead and jump back in here and go into this images folder and clone this repo and grab the avatars from this so we just want to throw that into our root directory and that's what we're going to be referencing here so let's go ahead and continue on with our guide so in our form field inside of the actual form div here we're going to create a div that says select avatar and we're just going to create this avatars div and make users select these before they can actually enter a room. So what I'm going to do is actually copy this and I'll just make sure the code is explained. So we're going to add this in our form just above our form fields div. So we'll bring this in here. So again, we have one div that just says select an avatar. This avatars div has some styling already in our CSS file. We display it as a flex. And we just go ahead and add in this class of avatar selection with each image added into that. So they're hard coded values in and that should style those up for us. So if I save this and go back to my front end here, we just see these avatars here now. So we want to add the ability to force a user to select these. So what I'll do here, first of all, is go into our main.js file. We're going to create some state for our avatar. This will be null by default. And if a user tries to submit their form without having an avatar URL here, it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and do this. So we'll go back into our main.js file. So we just have to do some prep work before we actually pass that avatar through. So uh, let's see, where do I want to put this? So let's actually put this next to Mike muted. So let's just go ahead and add it here. We'll just call this avatar and this will be set to null. So after that, what I want to do here is go ahead and grab all those avatar images. So each image has the class of avatar selection and I noticed there's no dash there. Maybe that's because I'm zoomed in. I'll make sure to fix that after this video, but we're going to go ahead and select all those avatars and then loop through them. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do that at the very bottom of this page here. This is main.js and we're grabbing this class avatar selection. So let's go ahead and do this document. Actually, let's go ahead and set this value. So we'll do const avatars and that's going to be document dot get elements by class name. We'll just go ahead and pass in avatar selection. So that's what we need. And then we're just going to go ahead and loop through those. So we're just going to go ahead and create the for loop here. And this is going to be let I and I is going to be equal to zero. We'll set that and then Let's go ahead and do avatars dot length. We're going to iterate through this. Got into the habit of writing my loops this way, so I just got used to it and I'll stick to that. So while I is less than the length, we'll just go ahead and increment I plus plus. And let's do this here. So we're going to add an event listener. So we're going to loop through every single avatar and we're going to add this event listener. So we'll grab the avatar and on click, we're just going to go ahead and first of all, select the we're going to set the avatar variable that we set to the value of the avatar that we clicked on so we want to get that source value and change its border color so let's actually start with that and then we'll continue on explaining the rest so we'll just do avatars i and then we'll do dot add event listener and then the event we want to listen for is click we're going to create this function make it an arrow function here so on click, we want to go ahead and get the current avatar. So avatar is going to be set to the source of what we just clicked on. So we're just going to do avatar and that's going to be set to avatars 
i dot source. So we want to select that value. Then what we want to do is go ahead and modify the styling to our avatar here or to the actual, yeah, to the avatar image. So we'll set the border color and the opacity. So we'll just do, let's see, avatar i dot style dot border color. And that's going to be equal to this. And I think that's going to be, yeah, that's a green shade. I almost forgot what it was, uh, what value I set there. Then we're just going to go ahead and get avatars. I need to slow down my type and I get ahead of myself and then I start messing up. Okay, so we're getting that current index of the avatar. We'll remove P from that. And we're just going to go ahead and do style.opacity. Wow, I cannot write. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and copy this. I can't do this right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually console out avatar here. So we don't want to set avatars. We want to set the avatar itself. So let's go ahead and on click, we're going to change the styling and we're just going to console.log and see the avatar. So that's going to be our avatar and let's just see what happens. Okay, so that's all we're doing. We're changing the source, changing the styling here and changing the opacity or the border color and then opacity. So I'm going to go ahead and do inspect here. Let's make sure it's all working. We'll grab the avatar. So on click, look what happens. We select the avatar. Here is the URL. So it's localhost 5173 avatars mail 1.png if i click on this one now it's the url or the file path to that specific avatar and we're just changing the styling so it's selecting it and we're setting that avatar variable now the issue here is that i don't want to select all of them i only want to select one so we're just going to go ahead and create one more loop so on click we're just going to loop through all the avatars and change their styling so i'm just going to copy and paste this just because i don't want to write that for loop again so before we modify the styling we're going to go ahead and loop through the avatars again on click and we're just going to go ahead and say hey go go and preset all the avatars back to their original styling so the background color or border color will be white the opacity will be 0.5 and that should be good so let's try this again so as i click on this one remember when i click on the next one it's going to update the styling to all the other avatars so there we go and that should be good okay so now that I think about it, what I probably could do, well, I guess I'd have to query the avatar that was selected. I could just change the styling to that, but I think the for loop at this point is simple enough. We're trying to go for a concept here and not perfect code. Okay, so after that, what I wanna do here, first of all, is make sure that we don't submit or we can't join a room without an avatar. So we're gonna check this condition. So we'll go into our enter room function and we're just gonna add this check. So we're gonna say, if and then we're going to use the not operator so if we don't have an avatar let's go ahead and just do alert and we'll just say you need to select an avatar before entering dot 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 okay and then we're just going to call return so return will just make sure that none of the code below will run so it's just going to stop this code and then we won't continue with this so let's try that if i try to join a room Let's actually refresh this, just add in a name so it doesn't work. And then if I select an avatar, now I can join a room. Perfect. Okay, so we added in that restriction. And this part here, this is going to be very similar. In fact, it's going to be exact to what we just did with our usernames. All we're going to do is add in the avatar as an attribute, pass it along, and retrieve it. So here we have our add or update local user attribute. We're just going to pass in the avatar. Let's go ahead and throw that in. And then we want to retrieve it. So we're going into our init RTM method somewhere here. So we call this method. We passed in the username, the user RTC. Let's go ahead and say avatar. Actually, we'll just call this user avatar. I don't want it to conflict with the name avatar that we set for this variable here. So we'll just call it user avatar. And that's going to be the avatar itself, not avatars. Okay, so we passed that in. And in order to retrieve it, we're just going to go ahead and get the user avatar. So we'll go down to the handle user member joined method. We're going to get the user avatar. So that's just going to be that URL in theory. So in a normal application, this would be your profile picture, probably hosted on an S3 bucket somewhere in AWS. Uh, but for now, we're just going to store that locally. And what we want to do here 
is just go ahead and create this image class with a or this image tag with a class of user avatar and here let's actually just write this out i want to do this slowly so you can actually see exactly what's happening give me one second i really want to make sure i'm not copying and pasting too much it's not a good habit when i'm teaching so inside of this user avatar wrapper all we're going to do is go ahead and add in the image tag close it off here for the source we're just going to go ahead and grab the avatar itself so we'll throw in quotes around it this will be user avatar so we just got the avatar we retrieved that attribute we passed in that array and then we destructured that we have the avatar and we want to go ahead and add in a class this is going to be user dash avatar so that's going to be one of the classes and then the next one's going to be avatar dash and then we want to pass in the rtc uid so there's going to be a quick style change that we're about to make here so we're going to take this user rtc uid throw that in because we want the avatar to be highlighted when we toggle the active speaker functionality so we'll pass that in and that should be it so we pass in the source here that's the user avatar the styling and then the id so let's go ahead and do the same right here so i'm just going to take this value right here and we're going to go down to get channel members and we're going to pass this into this user wrapper i probably could have extracted this code and made it into a function so it's not repeating itself but we're not using it that often so we'll go ahead and get the user avatar okay and let's see let's give this a test right now let's just see what happens we're going to join a room so we're going to do dennis i'll select this avatar enter and here we go so that actually looks good so we're just going to get rid of this border for that speaker wrapper and we want to make sure that this active speaker indicator highlights this avatar and not this border. So that's why we had to put in that avatar and then our RTC UID. So we want to be able to identify that by its unique value. So we'll go into style here. We'll get rid of the speaker border. And if I check this, here we go. So that looks good. Then we'll go into active speaker. Let's see. Inside of actor speaker, we're going to change this to avatar and then the user's id so if you look at this is avatar the rtc uid and then here we have avatar user rtc id okay so let's try this one more time here so dennis we're going to enter the room and if i turn on active speaker there we go highlights me perfect and then let's just try another user here we'll go into test we'll do sulamita we'll select this one enter and there we go so all the users can join and we're seeing everybody in this room let's just uh i don't know sam let's just throw that in and there we go as users leave everything is working awesome so i can always change my avatar let's say i want to change it to this one and there we go and both users will get that update okay so let's see what else am i missing i think that was it yeah so that was the last part I guess one more thing I want to throw in is the room name. So I didn't throw that in. So let's see, we want to go ahead and make sure that when we enter a room name, we want to get that room name ID because it's empty right now and change the inner text to that room ID. So on enter room, let's go ahead and update this. So inside of the enter room method, let's go ahead and do document dot get element by ID and this element is called room name it's just an h1 tag so we'll just do in quotes room name and then we'll just do dot enter enter text and that's going to be equal to the room id okay so let's test this real quick we'll join a room here we'll just do devrel and we'll throw in dennis 
I need to select an avatar. Look at that, it's already working. And there we go. So we have our room name. I'm in here, everything's working. Awesome. So that's it for this video series, at least for now. I don't know if I'll add any more videos to it. So I'll just say goodbye for now. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a lot. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the Agora Devs YouTube channel. Make sure to follow along because I'm gonna be putting out a lot more content on this channel. So I'll see you all later.